For more than a century, polo players from around the globe have tried to write their names on this cup, yet only a few have had the honor. Their names are embossed in silver for eternity and uphold the enduring heritage of polo for generations to come. It doesn't get any better than this, the most prestigious trophy in all of North American polo on the line today. It's that time of year again where dynasties rise and fall and legends are made. Nine teams will battle for the most prestigious trophy in all of American polo. Some will look to continue their legacy and others will try to create one. Watch as these modern day gladiators fight to carve out their place in history. Welcome to the 2024 US Open Polo Championship. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the USP Polo Network. We are here for the 2024 US Open Polo Championship. Today we have uh, playing on field number one here at the uh, National Polo Center. We're going to have Clearwater taking on Dudacorp, and this is the second preliminary game of the day. I'm Toby Lamon. Joining with me is always Cody Off, and Cody, here we go, buddy. Thank you, Toby. The Dudacorp coming off of a very narrow defeat to Park Place 7 5. It's actually the lowest scoring game of our gauntlet season. Thus far, Tomas Garcia Del Rio been leading the way despite missing a few games on the injured list. He's amassed 25 goals, 12 for 12 on penalty twos and threes, and he's won 16 throw-ins. This Dudacorp team scores 4.3 penalties, third most per game in the gauntlet, but their fifth out of nine team shooting just 39% from the field. And Toby, key stat for this Dudacorp team, seven of their nine games played this season have been decided by two goals or less. That's some, yeah, I tell you what, they've been right there the whole way. Uh, Clearwater, they, they, fell, they fell behind early in the, in the first preliminary game, uh, never really got things going. They lost 12 to six against Lafay. But Lucas Criado Jr. has been their top performer so far here in the gauntlet. He scored 23 goals on 55% shooting and adding a total of four assists too. Uh, this team scores 8.0 goals per game in the gauntlet, fewest of any team in uh, the tournament, or in the series, I should say. Criado has, uh, is shooting 55%, but the rest of the team is shooting just 28%. So, And then the key stat for them is 70% of their goals come from the field. Third best ratio in the gauntlet, which is pretty impressive. Okay, so now we're coming back around. We're going to have our national anthem come up here in just a few minutes. As Remember, this is our feature game of the week. So we, uh, we have a bit more pomp and ceremony to get through, but it should be a lot of fun here, Cody. So they're making their parade back around to the center. We're going to have the national anthem come up here in just a minute. So basically how the way we run through this is um, 
is, is we're going to have the parade. We'll have the national anthem. Gringo right there celebrating with, you know, pumping up his fans. Then we're going to get back to the center here in just a second. We'll have the singing of the national anthem. When we come back, Tony Coppola, the voice of Polo himself there, will introduce the field, the, the team's to the crowd field side here, and then and we will jump into the rosters, our graphic roster there, and then um, we'll get back to the rest of the, the game. But right now, the players are making their way to the center. So we're going to go field side here for the singing of the National Anthem. This is going to be Maggie is singing, and she's from the Palm Beach Opera. So we're going to go ahead and ask gentlemen to rise, or everybody to rise, gentlemen, remove your hats for the singing of the National Anthem. Here we go, field side. All right, beautiful rendition there of the national anthem. Thanks so much, uh, Maggie. And now Tony is going to go ahead and introduce these two teams field side. So let's jump into our graphics here. We'll start off with Clearwater. So you're going to have Lucas Criado Jr. playing number one. Gringo, the Professor Columbus, number two. Number three, Jared Zinni. And playing the number four position today is Chip Campbell coming in from Point Clear, Alabama. And then against them is the Duda Corp, Duda Corporation. Timmy Duda has gone from playing back to number one. They switched his team up, and I like the way they're doing it here. Joaquin Avendano playing the number two position. Number three is Nino Obregón, Mariano Obregón Jr. And Tomas Garcia Del Rio playing the number four position today. Our two mounted officials today are going to be Kimo Huddleston and Julian Appleby. And our third man is Martin Pasquale. And before we get any further, let's go ahead and jump into this uh, player highlight that we have of Lucas Criado Jr. so far. Yeah, Criado playing extremely well this season, Toby. And leading this team from the front, I think it'll be very important for them to get Criado cooking offensively. And I think we'll see some of his homebred horses here. I'm trying to see who he's going to come out on first. Sorry, Toby, as we take a look at this one more time. But Criado Jr., one of the most important pieces to this team for sure, Toby. And they need to get him rolling. Both of these teams hungry for a win in this game. I think it's going to be a good matchup here. It should be a lot of fun, that's for sure, Cody. All right, well, it's that time. Let's go ahead and introduce our very special guest here, my father, former 10-goal player in his own right, Tommy Wayman. Tommy, thanks so much for being with us today. Well, thank you guys for having me. This should be a lot of fun. I've been telling everybody for a long time, you know, that, uh, you know, whenever whenever we get done throughout the year, when you're up in Wyoming with mom, uh, uh, we, call, we talk to each other just about every day, and we talk about all the games throughout the day, and so... That's what they want to do. We want to do with you here today. It's just we want to hear some of your 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 knowledge and 
Um, we had somebody made a comment earlier. They said, you know, uh, I, I read on Facebook, they were saying, uh, uh, yeah, like my daddy always says, and, and then someone else was like, well, yeah, we're going to get to hear it from him, from the horse's mouth this time. So that's kind of fun. Uh, what are you thinking here, Dad, uh, from these two teams? If you, were, if you were coaching these two teams, what would you be telling each one of them right now? Well, I was really impressed with Duda last week against Park Place. Mm -hmm. They had them on the ropes, and they let them go. For four chuckers, they played as good a game as you could play. Hit mm. and run, hit and run. Those two guys couldn't be in uh, the same place twice. Sure. Then the fifth and chick, fifth and sixth chucker, they went to giving them dribbling lessons, mm -hmm. and they just take it away from them and go score it. Yeah. Had they not, not broke their concentration and – stayed there they'd have won that game uh, yeah and and that i think i think it has to do with a little bit here with how they've you know relined the team up here you it know? does uh timmy duda is is very good number one uh and del rio at back oh my god he's awesome and, it, and it's a good team it's a good team it they've just got to get on the same page exactly don't play the old style polo. Yeah, exactly. That's out. That's yeah. out. The know. turning and the tapping, and yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why they change horses every two minutes. <clears throat> Run those things. Yeah, Run them. You know? Exactly. And 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 you know, and then Avendano, uh, he was he's he learned the fundamentals of the, of the game the right way. I mean, he's yeah. definitely you know he goes to the man first, more of a man oriented player, which is a huge asset in oh, this yeah. kind of polo, right? Yeah. And, All right. Uh, as far as uh, Clearwater, I don't think they've ever got on an even keel they they're 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 they're, they're they don't they don't make a half a chucker playing good together and then they and yeah yeah they, they need they, to get more more they, cohesion yeah, they, they haven't played enough together yeah i see what you mean yeah just a bit of an experience <coughs> yeah. as, as a team yeah. yeah they're they're feeling their way along yeah than, as yeah. individuals they're all great players oh god yes. yeah and, and that's the thing about this these two teams all eight players are polo players. Hey, sure. You know, there's not a weak player on there. So it should be a very good very good and exciting game, I think. I should think, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, if you guys have any questions out there, let us know. Hit us up on the comment section on Facebook if you want to ask Tommy anything. Um, he'd be more than happy to, to answer your questions and comments as they come in. Easiest way to get a hold of us is on Facebook uh, comment section there. Or you can use the hashtag USPA Live on the other platforms. Um, we did have one question come in earlier from Leslie Heiner. She says, uh, she asked, where did you get uh, most of your horses over the years? Was it the American Thoroughbreds or Argentina? Both. Breeds? Yeah. Both. Uh, when uh, my dad and I went into partners together, we bought a lot of horses out of Oklahoma, Kansas, New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, Idaho. Washington. Washington. Yeah. That's where Sweet William came from. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> North Dakota, South Dakota. Nebraska was a... Uh, Charles and Cecil got a lot of horses out of Nebraska. Good horses. That's right. And, uh, as a matter of fact, threw two or three of them in the Hall of Fame. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and then Argentina? Argentina. Uh, I'd buy horses all over, and then we got the breeding program going, and I and, uh, still bought horses, but didn't need as many because we were breeding 60 mares. Yeah. And at the time, that was a, a huge number back then. Yeah. I mean, you just... You, it, it eats itself. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I know what you mean. All right. Well, we got a homebred of Lucas Criados there. That's Lac Sarah. And I think we'll see him talk about this horse coming up at our first chucker break. That's right. Yeah. He'll start Lu on her. Lucas Criado always had good horses. Always had Senior, good horses. Senior, yeah. Yes. And, and junior, too. And my kind, Andy, and mm -hmm. quick, and, and uh, no, he's very well mounted. And his son is very well mounted. He is. <clears throat> and then, um, well, let's see here. It looks like. Uh, okay, all right. So it's going to be picked up here by Nino. First one out of the gate, and here comes Zin that's Norval. That's a mare that uh, that Zinni got from Jeff Hall here recently. It's going to be picked up here. This is a CC is the name of this mare that uh, that Timmy saw on right here, and he's going to come in, let that ball roll over the line, and pick up the first point of the day. Very nicely done there. Blew a foul on him, didn't they? Oh, did they get him for a foul? Oh, they blew a whistle. A penalty blew one, a whistle. Yeah. 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 Looks like they're going to go with the penalty one. All right, so Timmy will get credit for that one. We'll come back to center for a throw-in instead of a – or excuse me, a, a penalty five instead of a throw-in, is what I meant to say here. Yeah, right here. A little late on the bump. Okay. Timmy. He was so late on that one, he's ahead for the next one. <laughs> 
See, folks, this is where I get where I get all of my sayings. They come directly from my dad right here. I promise. <laughs> all right, back to the center. Well, just as you talked about too, that was Joaquin Avendano that made that play happen there, mm -hmm. going in. As he does, end. yeah. Very unselfish player, Joaquin is. Yeah, I tell you, he's a, like I said, I, I really think he's a big asset to to this kind of team because, like you say, being that unselfish player. Well, this is interesting. Okay, hold on. Here we go. It's going to be Tommy Del Rio. This is that acrobatic mare of his. He's going to break back to the right, go past Chip Campbell right here, checks it up as Gringo comes in, makes a back shot. Gringo wins the play. Now he's going to have Criado come in to try to help out, but Joaquin goes in there to help out too. Now the professor with the ball back to the inside. Timmy takes a shot at him, but Gringo... Not going to lose those kind of plays very often. He fires this ball back down the field looking for Campbell. Chip out in front. Got to step on his man, forcing Tommy Del Rio to chase him down right here. Campbell. Del Rio takes it forward. Doesn't connect, actually. And now it'll be take, picked up here by Nino. Nino. That's that's the other horse that uh, came from... That's the Pilsner horse there that came from Jeff Hall, too. Now, here comes Timmy Duda working this one down. As he's going to go ahead and move back from left, right to left. Let's that one get away from him there. Nino takes it forward, and Gringo will come back up with the ball right here. I think this is Nikita is the mare that, that, that he starts on here in this first shucker, if I remember right. Now, Colombres with a tail shot. Excuse me, open back shot down the boards where it will be picked up again right here by... No, it's going to be Avendano getting into a sword fight right there. Avendano still trying to fight off the man. Well done, Joaquin. Hmm. Interesting play here. I kind of thought Joaquin had the line originally, but I think they're going to blow it against Joaquin right here. Let's see what you think, Dad. What do you think here? Uh, right, six there. one half dozen the other. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, if they're going to get him for slash hooking or uh, they call reach. That's a long reach, but oh, well done. All right. Thank you, Bob. What a nice comment there. He says, uh, well, we'll come back to that in a second here. Look at this. What a play right here. Nino comes in, takes it forward, winds up. Oh, he let this side of the ball get away from him there. We'll get a penalty, or excuse me, a knock-in now for Clearwater. And they'll look to tidy up this knock-in here after that broken penalty five. Yeah. A lucky break there. Nino not taking advantage of that turnover. Yeah, not making him pay for it. All right, Colombres with the ball here, takes it back to the inside. Oh, my goodness. Well, he's good thing he's got Criado here to back him up. Lucas will take the man and leave the ball for Gringo. Timmy comes in to challenge Colombres. Now they're going to force Timmy out of the way. Umpires will tell him to clear right there. And then he's, Gringo's going to send it back across the field. Coming in, it's going to be a back shot here. Knocked down. And over the boards, it's actually going to go in favor of Dudacorp here. If I'm not mistaken, didn't it come off of uh, Jared? I thought it did. Well, Del Rio was certainly signaling that it went off of Clearwater. In fact, it yes, did. it did. Okay. Tommy, after a tap, fires back down towards the goal. It's off to the right-hand side. Now Zenny gets to it, hits that open back shot here where he's going to find Campbell coming in, and Chip takes it forward, keeps it away from Avendano. Chip couldn't get the next shot of it, and it's going to be kicked over the boards for another possession play, though, on this side of the field. Second possession of the day. Let's see. Did that... It's going to be, again, it's going to be in favor of uh, Dudikorv. Let's see. Let's see. Won the first matchup versus Dudikorv. Uh... 11-10, okay. Here comes Chip Campbell trying to get in there and make a play on the ball. Ooh. Gringo. Yeah, I think they're going to catch Chip. Hold on, yeah. They're going to catch Chip on this one. Yep, on a right away. Penalty number two coming up for Duda. Yeah. <coughs> okay, there we go. All right, so you will watch this one once again. You're going to see... Nino get on this right away, right there, and then Chip comes in, kind of gets caught over the top. So penalty two comes up here in favor of Dudacorp. Okay. 
Who's been taking these, Cody, so far for the most part? Has it been Tommy? Yeah, mostly Tomas Garcia Del Rio. Looking for their second goal. Remember, he did miss a few games on the injured list. That's right. So Facundo Josa take his place with that goal. Tommy remains perfect on his open goal penalty. He's now 13 for 13 on twos and threes. All right. Here in the gauntlet. I think these two horses that came from Jeff Hall came from our neighbor in the southern part of Argentina. His name is Russo Susana. That's right. And he's like a four-goal player, really good player, and has made really good horses. And he told me that these horses actually hunted wild hogs on our ranch. Really? <laughs> yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. So their polo field is a piece of cake. For them, yeah, exactly, when, they're, when they grow up down in that country. All right. Here comes... Uh, Nino Obregoni sends this ball down. Going to be – here comes Zenny for the defense. Is he going to hit the tail shot? Yeah, he does, and it's going to be picked up now by Criado Jr. Luquitas coming back around now. Taps that ball forward as Nino comes into challenge. Now he's going to go ahead and send it back across to the far side over there looking for Columbres, but it'll be picked off. But well done. What a play by Avendano taking out Columbres right there, letting Tomas have the ball, takes a shot at the goal. Oh, <laughs> He got it. It did go in. I thought it was wide. What a shot there. Wow. Tomas Del Rio. Excellent play, like you said there, Toby, by Avendano, clearing out some room. And take a look from this angle at this shot. Tomas hits it down, and it just squeaks inside that post. Nicely done. He doesn't need much more room than an envelope. Yeah. You're right. I mean, yeah. and he's one of those players. I was for I, I, Tommy Del Rio. He's such a smooth classical mm -hmm. player, and I and I, I forget when I don't see him play for for a while how good he is until you see him back back out there again. All right, here comes Tommy or Timmy Duda. Timmy tries to get out of the air, not going to able to be able to get to it, and they're going to blow a foul here against Criado. Let's watch this replay here and see what we can see. Is that is that Forlock or is that Mr. Musty? I think it's Forlock, isn't it, Cody? Maybe yeah, it is tough Mr. To Musty. Tell I don't know. They're... Mr. Musty, take a look here. Timmy's trying to hit that one out of the air. Hmm. And that will result in a penalty two in favor of the Dudacorp. Road under his shot. Okay. Let's see. Uh well. Sasha has a question. She says, does the new style of polo demand a different type of horse? They're all good horses. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they're just trained differently. These are trained to go three and a half minutes. Ours are trained to go seven and a half minutes. Sure. Uh, and there's very few horses that can go seven and a half minutes. These horses can play three and a half and come back two checkers later and play another three and a half. So they end up doing the whole seven just to... They do the whole seven, but in spurts and uh the, the training's different the 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 conditioning's different uh i i i i, I feel I, like it's going to be uh the way that the game is naturally evolving and the way that they're trying uh, that we're trying to move the game i say we as the uspa uh with the rules that are being uh contemplated and, and put into place to make the game faster and speed it up is, is probably going to be a lot easier on the horses when you've got hit and run. It is rather than, than pulling up and turning and twisting. It takes a lot of energy. Absolutely. Up when, and down the field doesn't take, it takes energy, but not like that. Right, exactly. And every, there's only so many stops in a horse. Yep. And there's so much speed in a horse. And when you run out of the stops, you don't have anything left. Exactly. It's all gone. And it's all control. Yep. It's all control. This is control at speed, though. Exactly right. Good way to put it, Dad. Okay. Ringo brings the ball into play. He hits it down. Picked up. Good question there, Sasha. Thanks so much. Now, coming in, Nino. Ay, ay, ay. Another whistle here. A little choppy here in the first chucker, but that might just end the chucker here. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like the, 30, the, the first horn sounded. So we'll be back after this quick break here on the USPA Polo Network to continue with our second game of the day here in the U.S. Open Polo Championship.
Laxara is um, nine years old. Uh, she's out of Corazón and Machitos Parker. Corazón is a, a grey mare that was from Ricardo Portugal. My dad used to play in the Open, that she was really good. And, bueno, Laxara, I think she's following her steps. I played her uh, two years ago in Argentina, the Camara, and she was my best mare. So I said I had to bring her to the States to play here, and I brought her last year to play with the Valiente 22, and I think it took her a while to, to get used to the, to the place here, and I think now she's starting to, to do better and better, and she's, she's my top mare for sure. Uh, I start on her because I feel comfortable on her. I know that she'll get me in the game fast, and I'm going also to play her a bunch of times. Zinni with the back shot right there, and Antonio, look at that. What a horse right here by Criado. Criado in the red zone. No way. What a goal. Antonio, look at that. What a horse right here by Criado. Criado in the red zone. Her heart, she goes like, she can go really fast. And whenever she starts to feel tired, she gives you, she gives you another gear. When all of the horses are tired, I think she, she's tired also, but she's still going faster than the rest. I mean, she's unbelievable. All right, welcome back everyone to the USP Apollo Network. Getting ready to start chucker number two here of our feature game of the week. Uh, we got some graphics to jump into here, Cody. We Let's saw, check them out. Yeah, we saw earlier that these teams did face each other before 11-10 game in that one. Seven of the Dudacorp's nine games have been decided by two goals or less, as you can see here, including that seven to five loss against Park Place their last time out. So very hungry for a win and what a start in that first chucker, jumping out to a four to nothing lead. Okay. And then we got this question coming in for Dad. It says, okay, what is the best horse Tommy owned and what was the best horse Tommy ever played against? Great question. Um, the best horse I ever rode was a horse called Sweet William that came out of South Dakota. <clears throat> Bought him off a ranch. And uh, and how we got him, I mean, he was one hell of a horse. You could do anything on him. Anyway, uh, the guy that owned him was a young guy, and he bucked him off and <laughs> broke his leg. And the guy that owned the ranch said, okay, either the horse goes or you both go. And the guy needed the job, so we bought the horse. <laughs> and he never bucked me off, but he came close. <laughs> and uh, But we figured him out pretty quick. And yeah. uh, the best horse I ever played against, there's so many of them. Joe Barry's Alabama. That's a great horse. Uh, Memo's Mr. Polo. Yeah. Um, oh, they're just I, – I, I, I never got to use – Sweet William against those horses. Oh, that's I took a shame. Him to, I took him to Europe, and uh, it, no, he's one one of the he is the best horse I ever rode. Okay. Uh, there we go. Get a point put on the board right there by Del Rio. So now we've got a uh, let's see five zero score on the board. Third penalty two so far of the day for him. Four straight goals off the mallet of Del Rio. Yeah, three penalty twos and one from the field for Tomas. We got uh, some more cool stuff coming in here that we'll have to get to in a little bit. Um, on a uh, yeah, five and run. Okay, so let's did, see. Did you name Sweet William or did he come with the name? No, actually, Sweet William was his father. Okay. His, oh, regi yeah? his registered name was Cog's Hoop. Who in the <laughs> hell ever named a horse Cog's Hoop? <laughs> <laughs> so we called him Sweet William. <laughs> That's a great, great name, though, Sweet William. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Cog's Hoop. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, who oh would have thought God. of that? You know? That's awesome. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Yeah. All right. So, Timmy's shot picked up here by, by Gringo Colombres. He takes off right now. Gringo going to the goal. Can he get his team on the board here for the first time? He's in the red zone. Colombres shoots. Did he get it? He sure did. The professor strikes for the first time today. All right. Certainly needed that one. Clear water. Trying to get some momentum going here. Starting out pretty flat in the in that first chucker. And this is a good start here. Giving up that penalty, too, to start the chucker. Gringo comes right back down. Kind of like what you first. were talking about, Dad, before we started the game was, you know, how they, uh, this this Clearwater team, they, they just kind of need more experience playing yeah. together here. And Right, right. And, and, and what I'm, I'm seeing is 
they don't have a, a, a horse list. Uh, they're they're kind of scattered on their good horses, their sure. bad horses, and and uh, when they're going to put their yeah. I'm not saying bad horses. No, I'm just yeah, saying yeah, better yeah. horses, and and they they tend to wind up coming on either all good ones or all not so good. Sure, you know? not as good. Yeah, if yeah. you will. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, let's see. Duda. Oh, puts it over the boards right there. I I think this is a. Centuria here that uh, we've got Lucas Criado on. This is one because I've got uh, somebody sent me that message there. Said this is Centuria. I don't know if this is. I don't think this is the one that that came from from uh, from Wyoming from Wayne Garrison's operation. He's got two though that he's playing today. Here comes Criado with the ball. Now it's going to be a back shot there, and then it'll be yeah straight back shot right here after the horse. It's hit on the back shot. It's over the back line wide. So we'll get a knock in now for uh, the Dudacorp. That was a big goal for Gringo as well, Toby. Recall in that loss to LaFay, their first game of the Open, Gringo did not find the score sheet. And you and I were mentioned, I don't know if either of us remember the last time we saw Gringo play a game without scoring at least That's one. right. Good call there, Cody. Good point, yeah. All right. So it was an even bigger goal now that, now that you mention it. All right, Chip Campbell gets back to it right here. Campbell coming back around now, taking off with his ball, going to the goal. Look at Chip out in front. You got it, Chip. Oh, oh tough break there. Got away from him. Now it's going to be a quick back shot here. To be picked up now by Del Rio. One time he hits the ball quickly down there to Timmy. And I tell you what, Timmy's played back for probably the past six, seven years. I like him in the number one position here. Of course, as I'm saying that, that it bounces over his mallet. But he's always got that instinct, the natural instinct to go forward. Now it's picked up, turned back around by Luquitas. Criado back to the inside right here. As he's got Timmy there to put some pressure on him. He's going to try to drop back to Gringo. This is the Nikita horse that Gringo's on right now. Okay, this is Nikita. Now, here comes, oh, Gringo broke his mallet. Uh-oh. Can he do the Santi Javajol play here? No, let's see. I uh, think they're going to get... Well, we'll find out who they're going to blow this one against. I know Jared said he's going to be playing his uh, two best here, Naval and Candela, in the first and second, and the fifth and the sixth. So this is Candela that we've got him on. Gringo's mallet must have been previously broken. Looks like the head just went flying. I mean, it just popped shot. right off, didn't it? Did he hit? Oh, I was thinking maybe he hit it. Horse stepped on it or something. Or let's watch it again. Wow! He hit the ground. He, he just, just hit the ground, ground, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. That hurts. But I yeah. think they're gonna they're gonna call this against Nino riding in from behind penalty five for Clearwater. He got lucky there. All right, five for Clearwater. Here comes Criado. Hits a neck shot back. Well done. That was going to be a goal. Uh, it's still a goal anyway. Wow. Well done right there. Getting there, getting back on the board here. Lucas Criado picks up his first of the day. Yeah. Taking advantage of that penalty five, working it down, and Criado with the neck shot takes a deflection. I think Walker got a piece of that with his mallet. Nicely done, but a kiss off the post, and in for the score and clear water back to back goals have them trailing by just three now okay umpires line them up now gonna be chip goes in there and gringo has to give him a play right here del rio flips it back underneath gringo gringo wow smart play by gringo but tomas is gonna be able to get to him here and beat him on this play right here tomas garcia del rio coming back around Holds the ball as he gets to the boards. Hits the tail shot there. Off a of gringo. Off the boards. Back shot here. And it's going to be Avendano to take it with him. No, he's clean right there all day. Now, he gets called off by Tommy. Tommy, fire. Or excuse me. Yeah, that was Tommy. Shoots it down at the goal. Look at the shot from Del Rio. Oh, what a play. Tomas Garcia Del Rio. He's on shooting a goal today. Five goals now for Del Rio. Without the best of the bunch. What a shot. It's almost unfair when he gets to look at the whole goal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good way to put it, Dad, yeah. yeah. That was a bomb from 
Well, that's about a hundred yards out or more, I'd yeah. say. That's it. I think if that's, let's see. Tommy's horse. Well, I'm not sure. He started off on Merino. That uh, if I think it's a gelding or yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a gelding. Yeah, that Merino gelding. Yeah, really nice horse. Now, coming back around here. Let's see who it's going to be. It's going to be Tommy once again sending it forward here. Gringo for the defense. Colon brace makes the hook. Turns the ball back around. Goes to take off right here. But I tell you one thing about Avendano. He doesn't quit. He'll come right back at you. Now, Tom, now Gringo's going to leave the ball right here for Lucas. And look at he, he, uh, uh, Avendano still just looking at Gringo, keeping him out of the play. Now, coming in, Del Rio wins the ride off here. Goes back at him. Takes it forward. With an open back shot. Wow, man. I tell you what. Such a classical, great player. Columbus gets back to it. Oh, that's going to cost him right here. Nino jumps on it. And here we go. Horse race time coming. Nino sends it down. Who's got the less tired horse right here? Nino and being chased by Criado. Can he get one more on the board before the end of this chucker? Looking good right here. He checks up. Decides to run it in. Nino overgone. He's got Tommy behind him. He'll wind up and shoot at the goal. Oh, they're moving, though. See, I'm not sure about that because. All right. Either way, that's going to end the chucker. We'll come back and find out what the call is going to be after this quick break right here on the USPA Polo Network. All in line and ready for the start. There is a moment in every horse race. Lockdown! When expectation spins into realization. Way to go to a perfect start. But no one's going to catch your horse. Unbelievable. And they're into the stretch. And you probably also thought to yourself, wouldn't it be even what better if I could way? truly call that racehorse my own? Wicked strong wings it going away. Well, why couldn't you? All right, welcome back to the USP Poll Network. Getting ready to start chucker number three. Last chucker of the first half. We got some more questions coming in here. Let's see. Here's our first one here. What does Tommy think is his greatest poll of achievement coming from Mark? Okay. What you well, say? I, uh, <laughs> uh, obviously getting to 10 goals. Yeah. Uh, but I think my greatest achievement was my family. Yeah. I don't know. I'm included in that. Are you sure you want to make that your answer? <laughs> <laughs> no, but my dad, my father-in-law, I mean, they were so helpful they in my really career. They really were, yeah. And, and uh, they never, I never had to sell a horse. That's uh, big. You know, uh, even yeah. when I was a kid and I got one I could play, dad, it wasn't for sale. Yeah. So it, that made me. And then half and I started breeding program with uh, mostly Santa Marina blood, Dickie Santa Marina Uh who had, for me, the best breed of horses going. Wow. And, and uh, he'd, he'd been breeding them for 100 years. Yeah. And uh, uh, there's a story to that. His wife was Fred Post's daughter, and Fred Post was the biggest East Coast polo pony dealer. And Tommy, uh, his son, was selected to go to the 1936 Cup of the Americas. And he didn't get any horses on the boat. They sent him down there. Wiley Jones was an old horseman that we've known for 100 years. Worked for Mr. Post. He sent him down there, and he said, get Tommy mounted. 
He went to Dickie. Dickie and him were good friends. And Dickie said, take my horses. And uh, he made the team, and eight out of the six horses he had came from Dickie. That's amazing. And uh, when Dickie got married, he and Francis, uh, Pete Bostwick sent him a stud as a wedding present. And the stud was in quarantine for six or eight months. They couldn't get him out, couldn't get him out. Dickie told me he was going to the little town of Tranky Locken to send a telegram to send the horse back to the States, and he got a tele telegram <coughs> that the horse was being let out. So he, uh, he, that was the foundation sire of all the horses I got. That's really cool, Dad. Yeah, came from Pete Bosley. Well, all right, and then the, the next question came in. It was from Memo, and I believe it said, uh, uh, what changes would you like to see? Can we see it again? I don't want to get a yeah, question. Well, yeah, here we go. What would Tommy like to see to make today's game more open coming from Memo Gracita? I think this new rule that they tried in the Rotoma Cup mm -hmm. is really going to open this up. Uh, to eliminate that blocking so that the game can flow up and down the field. Uh, these guys are going to be changing horses every two minutes if that happens. You know, I, I tell you, I'm like you, Dad. I When I first heard about it, I thought, what is this? You know, like I didn't think I was going to like it. But from what we've seen, man, yeah, those games I, are fun, It opens huh? it up, you know. And uh, I think when that – of course, they'll figure out how to do other things with it. But mm -hmm. uh, as every polo player does, you know, lay awake at night figuring out how to get around it. But um, it's going to open the game up tremendously. I and, think uh, I think you're really right about that. Yeah, it's it's like the 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 illegal blocking rule mm -hmm. that opened things up. It really did. This yeah. is a kind of an evolution of that, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Live play blocking. Okay, uh, that horse with that glasses there that Nino's on is it? That's that uh, Garanda mare. It's a fun fun mare that he's got. Here comes Chip Campbell. Now Gringo. That's Coquito. That's his good horse here. That uh, gelding of his that he had that he he's had forever. Now, Luquita's taking off with this ball, taking it back around Criado, working it back down here. Luquita's going to the goal, going to get it on the board right here. Yes, he does. What a play. So they're starting their second half comeback right here. That's his second of the day. Criado getting that goal back quickly here once again. Two goals both from the field for Luquita's nice run. Beautiful horse. A That's good finish. Lapis, one of the one of those siblings that we talk about there, of, of Ahi's. That horse can mortally fly. Okay. Back to the center. Let's see who's going to win this. Watch Gringo right here. There he goes. He's going to dig it out from underneath Timmy. Yes, he does. There. Gringo gets it done. Takes it. Turns it all the way back around. Getting some help from his teammates. He's going to go ahead and send it down the left-hand side. Not sure what Nino is looking for there. Duda gets to it. Hits a back shot here looking for Tommy. But it'll be picked up by Jared Zenny. Back over here. Gringo takes the man, but uh, well done. Nino makes the hook anyway. Tommy with a back shot here. I like this open style pull. Tommy, that's the way he plays. Tommy, Tommy Del Rio just hits that open. He's got such a big back shot. He can really well, place he, it too. He puts he puts the emphasis on on attacking. Sure. And uh, when you're attacking, defense that, is on defense yeah exactly good way to put it dad and as long as you're going offense you can't be doing wrong yeah but that's right yeah his defense is directly to turn it back into an offensive yeah. game for his team that's a good way all right here comes Criado gonna uh oh miscommunication not gonna be good right here that shouldn't happen we've seen a few of those mistakes made there by some of these big teams throughout the gauntlet and they always seem to cost them but they're gonna get lucky right here it's gonna be a great play there by Criado, and then over the back line wide. Wait, we're going to get a right of way against Joaquin. Is what they're blowing right now. It's Apollo. Okay. Penalty five from the spot Apollo. here for Clearwater. That little that little wobble there where they both left the ball. That's what I'm talking about. Those, they haven't yeah. played enough together to work out those those kinks. kinks. Yep, exactly. Because that's a, that's an unforced error. The way they both are. Yeah. Right. Now, uh oh, ouch! That hurt. Yep. Here we go. Picked up now by 
Joaquin Avendano, can he make him pay for this one? He's going to go with an open back shot here. I like the shot from Joaquin. Look at this. What a goal. Avendano. K. Hugador, beautiful play right there by Waco Avendano. Great Dec decision here to go with that open back shot. Yeah. Joaquin, difficult angle. We take another look at it. Coming across the goal mouth. Took it a little bit. Yeah, there's yeah, almost awesome no way to hit a shot. cut shot back to it, so no. that's what he had to do. Good looking. Okay. Now, Nino going to win this throw and gets out of there with it. Takes off running right here. Looking to get another one on the board. And the Dudacorp is off to the races right here. They're cooking in this first half of the game. 3.44 left to go. Now, the play is going to be won here by Zenny with an open back shot. Turning it back around now, Tommy Del Rio coming to pick up the play. He's going to have some help there from Tom from Timmy Duda. Del Rio back to the inside, breaks to the right. Here comes an oh my goodness, he looked up. Might have been told to leave it. Yeah, <clears throat> could have been, but it'll be Zinni to wind up and send this ball back across the other side of the field. Here comes the back shot from Avendano, and now look at Timmy fighting right there with. Uh, yeah, now Gringo comes up with a play, but Nino's going to beat him right here. Nino with that near side next shot. Look at this. What a goal, Nino. Okay. Very nicely done there. And the Duda Corp. Good hustle here from Duda Criado. Maybe thinking he should have backed that one time. This is why that's a dangerous play, trying to turn it in front of your own goal mm -hmm. mouth. And a great finish there from Nino. Okay, here we go. I was watching an eight-goal game the other day. Nino's brother Facundo was playing, and Nino had the whole clan, the whole family there, the whole clan. All, all seventy-five cool brothers. We're gonna. Well, no, his his children. All oh, the seven, kids too. All, all six of his kids. Wow. And we're gonna be seeing these Obergons playing for quite a while. Yeah, I agree. He's got there. four boys. He can, and and two girls, I believe. He can That's already awesome. he's got a full polo team and a half already. <laughs> he's got a polo yeah, a polo team with a couple of uh couple of alternates there too. Here comes Chip. Campbell with the ball. His shot goes over the back line wide. So we'll get a knock in here for the Dudacorp. Tough break there for Chip. Let's see. Dudacorp with a knock in. Down to uh, just under 2 minutes left to go here. Uh, <laughs> well, we got a good question. That Lily says, who does Tommy think was his best uh, groom of all time? And uh, I think Manny Torres, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Open back shot right here. Going to be Gringo to pick up his own back shot. Look at that. Gringo coming in hot. Going to beat everybody here. Blows the doors off. And Nino Obergon going to the goal. Gringo taking it through. Good play right there with the man holds out. His uh, teammate was holding out the defender, and we get a point on the board now. Nine for the score. Very nicely done here for Gringo Colombres. <laughs> his own personal play right there. Two. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Gringo. Man, what a goal right there by Colombres. Second of the day. They'd like to get another one here before halftime if they can. Yeah, they got enough time for a throw-in. Well... Let the umpire source will cooperate. There he goes. He'll just pop it in the play. Gringo. Oh. Yeah, meeting on the near side there, kind of. All right, so we're going to get the clock is stopped with 34 seconds left to go. Depending on who was back on defense, we'll see how the umpires decide to place this ball. Challenge pending. Oh, they challenged it? Oh, man. That might be an emotional challenge, as they say. Remember, there has to be, yeah, they're going to decline the challenge. Just like that. To me, I think that was, um, that must have been one of those ones like Mario Nogueri is telling us, you know, where he, he'll bet your house that you're right. <laughs> Until. Uh, yeah, you'll see here, Gringo I on mean, the near side. Nino's trying to meet it. Nino established the line, pushing it forward. Yeah. When Gringo gets home tonight and watches this game again here, I think he's going to be like, mm, maybe not. 
Penalty four coming up, going in favor of the Duda Corp. This should be the last play of the first half. Make it or miss it, this should end the chucker, unless the ball is knocked down and left on the field, in which case we'll, we'll keep on going. Let's see. We got a bunch of good stuff coming in here. What do you think was okay? Here comes Tomas Garcia del Rio. Del Rio looking good on this approach right here. That's a goal. Look at that shot. Undefendable right down the middle. He even puts it into the scoreboard. That's going to end the chucker right there, getting his team to double digits, 10 for the score. Okay, so that'll end the first half. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, we're going to have a we're going to have a video here. What's the name? It's going to be. Yeah, stay tuned. We have a USBA presents umpires improving the game. We're going to run that full feature here That's at right. halftime. Then we'll come back. We're going to have an interview with Abigail McKenzie, and then we'll be back with you after all that. Remember, longer than usual halftime here as it is the feature game of the week. We'll be back after half here on the US Football Network. Well, I grew up, uh, my father used to play polo. I grew up with him playing and it became uh, my life. Whenever I, I thought about umpiring, it was a way to stay in, in, in the same sport, in the same environment, even after I couldn't play anymore. I would really like to see more players who are at a crossroads of where to go with their career really consider umpiring as something that is a viable career option and career path. My ethos when I took over was I wanted to make this organization what I wanted it to be when I was an umpire. Three, two, one. Hey, hey, hey. I think I have reaching on white, huh? Reaching on white, penalty from the spot to black. Being on a horse at full speed, having to change a lot of what you do, according to what the players do. I think it's really okay. satisfying. It's what makes me personally enjoy the, the umpire. That's okay. All good. Yeah. It's a difficult job. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of time away from home. Some of these umpires are over 250 days on the road each year. So it's more than just a job for, for a lot of us. It's, it's really a lifestyle and a choice and something that we're very passionate about. All right, well, um, good to see everybody. Good to be here. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I guess uh, my first message is going to be this is when the grind really starts. The weekly meetings we have are critically important. It allows us to stay fresh and stay current on the things that are really a focus for us. It's great setting out to do things, but if we don't go back and examine whether we did them or not, then we're just kind of talking into the ether you know we have to we have to really examine what we're doing we don't let complacency creep in <clears throat> from everything that I'm seeing I'm really really pleased with the way you guys are interacting with the players I'm hearing a lot less of voices getting raised to talk over the players if we bring our level down try and get everybody to calm down and get to a place where we can communicate and interact effectively, then uh, it's gonna, you know, gonna be a lot better for, for all of us. And I think you guys are all seeing how effective that is. We get together after the game, we have a debrief, we talk about it while it's fresh, and we talk about those things that you don't necessarily wanna talk about. That call that maybe we didn't get right, or that moment where we could have done something better than we did. It's really about trying to dig down and, and, and drill down on the things that we're doing well and the things that we can improve on. Thank you very much everybody and have a good day. Good. Have a good game. What you need to have to make it to this level are details on in every play. Textbook rules, you know, we all have them but I think I think there are some details you can see which you're closer to the players. Hey, it's good to read. One's good, one yeah. black's good. Black near side, black. white, this black now. 
going in. Oh. The technology we have available, uh, as far as the individual umpires, we have body-worn cameras. The umpires know that their interactions and their decision-making process is going to be recorded so they can go back and look at those things. Is that good? Is that good? No, no go, Fair, no go. No. How do you feel about the one? Well, too far, right? We also have radios that we use that allow open communication between the two on-field umpires. And then we have the third man. The third man has access to video replay. Behind yeah, him, except something, or you want to go for I think four is a good foul, no? Yeah, there's nobody in front of him. Yeah, we put everyone back in front of him at the good foul. What time. do you think, Kimo? Yeah, good foul. We are trained to stay with our with our emotions away and bring the bring the players down when they're up in the, with the adrenaline and everything. Right away, Brandon. I'm not taking anything from your your teammates, okay? No arguments from them. Dale. Control them. Two. When you're trying to win a game, your level of, of excitement and, and intensity is so high that part of our job is to get them back to a place where now they can listen to our decisions in a rational way. Oh, he's hitting, he's hitting you know, enough. Not another word. Can you see word. Please, he's hitting you. What was that? And first we like conduct right here. White number two. The the stress of, of making decisions on the field when particularly when there's a lot at stake professionally for these players, there's a, a huge investment from, from team owners. But also there's there is the danger aspect and we look for opportunities throughout the year to do training and coming up next week we're actually working with Echelon Front, which is a consulting group of former Navy SEALs. Three or four inside, guys. Three go, or four go, 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 go. Push the board, cover and move. Let's go, let's go. The premise behind extreme ownership is every individual can only control their own action. We can only change ourselves, but through changing ourselves, through taking ownership, we can change and help to influence the environment around us. So that's what we're out here doing at the FTX, is teaching some of those principles in a, a, a different vessel, a different environment that allows people to experience stress allows people to feel pressure. Because under that pressure in environments that we're not totally used to, our natural human tendencies come out. And as we expose those and as we embrace those, we have the opportunity to acknowledge them and then work on changing them. Guys, come All the way, keep going. Yeah. Okay, now we're probably gonna have to head that way to get through this opening. Let's go. I think this relates to life in general and, and to polo and umpiring in that the way we apply these, these principles, cover and move, it's impossible to be successful as an umpire without your other umpire, third man, the whole support team behind you, so that's kind of the cover and move aspect of it. We try to keep it as simple as possible. Polo is an extremely complex game and, and the rules are very complex, so we try and simplify that and make it as straightforward and as easy to umpire as possible. Let's go boys, let's go! Let's Prioritise go. and execute. We're always trying to focus on the, the highest point of, of impact. So the rules and, and the standards of enforcement that we think are going to be uh, the most beneficial to the way that the, that the game is played and, and decentralising command is really just empowering every umpire and, and every Kind of member of our organization to make the decisions that they're able to make and, and give them ownership over their part of, of their world. Okay, let's go. Okay, without code at all. Hang on, I'm, look, I'm looking right now. Huh? I got a penalty two. Penalty two? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. it's just. Uh, yeah, I see you'd ask him off. Penalty two, guys. Penalty two. It was going to be the call that decided the game in favor of the team that was fouled if it was a confirmed foul. The third man took, took a lot of time and looked at it. In the interim, there was a little bit of a confusion with communication, and so the umpires 
hadn't heard back from a third man, so they continued as if the foul had been confirmed. Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on, hold on, hang on, hold on, hang on, hold on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What happened? Across. Yeah. I don't think that. No. And then we get the, the the third man on the radio saying we needed to wait because there was something that wasn't right, and he needed to check it again on the on the video. He changes the line across the field. When the black comes to meet it, Doctor, take, the third man. When he when the black comes to steal the ball on the um, offside, he's white did nothing wrong, man. All right. Yeah. Okay. Throw it. We got no foul guys. Throw in there. Yeah, yeah. We double checked it. All right. Thank you, man. That's I. Uh, I thought you you answered. I mean, you didn't answer and. I guess you didn't oh, have sorry. the button. I, I thought I hit the button. Yeah, yeah. I thought you guys were hearing yeah. me. No, 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 no we no. couldn't hear you, and so we no. just assumed you were good with it. Yeah. Yes. It's a throw in right here. We try and get stronger, learn from our mistakes, and be transparent. And, and I've always said to our umpires that if we don't own up to our mistakes, we have no credibility. So when we when we do make a mistake, we put our hand up and say yes, that was not correct, and and we're we'll, we're going to do better. Okay. White, 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 white. That's good. That's good. Well, we had a miscommunication there. We asked about it, and uh, that was the. the call. <laughs> Thank you. Good game, huh? I feel like we're on the right track as a as an organisation, and and one of my personal goal for this organisation is to be the gold standard for umpiring in polo, but my long-term goal is to take it further than that and for us to be the gold standard for officiating. Welcome back to the USP Polo Network. We're going to go field side right now with Abigail McKenzie. She's going to have an interview with us here with Robbie Babau. Take it away, Abigail. Thanks, guys. Abigail McKenzie here with Robbie Bilbao. Robbie, you know, first week of the US Polo Open Championships in the books. I mean, it's, there's got to be a little bit of more pressure, more expectations from the team, from yourself versus, you know, the C.V. Whitney Cup or the Gold Cup, all big tournaments in general, but the U.S. Open is probably more intense. See, sí, of course, I think you prepare the whole season. When you start preparing the season last year, you start think, you, you only think in the U.S. Open. I think uh, especially maybe teams like us that we cannot be prepared 100% for all the tournaments, the U.S. Open is our last chance of doing something. So, yes, it's totally different, totally different. And so, you know, three months of very intense polo for your horses. You're not only playing the 22 goal, but, you know, other tournaments as well, the 16 goal. How do you keep your horses in the best condition as possible after so much polo through so many games and so on? Well, it's something that we talk with the team, with Fran, with Louis, with the guys, um, to try to don't push them too much during the practice. Actually, all the horses are different, and they are not all playing all the games. So it's something that day by day, we try to take care of them, like we talked just before, maybe the rest in the paddock, some, some don't push in too much, some they just work instead of trotting. So it's something day by day, yeah. talking with the vet. It's, it's not the routine that we have because it's impossible. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I mean, today's Easter. We're all here celebrating Easter at the National Polo Center. I mean, in the horse world, anybody that owns horses knows there really aren't any holidays in polo. You know, the, I'm sure you were at the barn this morning. Yeah, it's, uh, it's impossible. When they tell you, they talk about summer, about Sundays, about Monday. No, ni idea. No. Actually, it happened in Polo that you say, which day is today? You yeah. have no idea which day is. Yeah, for us, it's the same. The week, the weekends, is. Yeah. 24-7. Oh, and you never know when you'll get a call at 2 in the morning, like happened to us last week, that a horse is sick. They say, uh, it's, you know, my friends, uh, well, the people that they prepare the weekend, I'm waiting for Friday because you know, and you say, for me it's the same. Friday is the opposite. We play yeah. it during the weekend, so you're like I'm just waiting for one day. I'm waiting day. for one day. You never know when. 
when they try to make plans for in 10 days, I say impossible for me to do a plan in 10 days. Yeah, exactly. Well, Robbie, thank you so much for speaking today with us, and good luck in the upcoming games for the Open um, with your team, La Fe. Thank you, Abby. Thank you very much. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Abby. Great interview there. Great to hear from Robbie. Good information. We're coming back. Let's see. Let's do our first half stats here, if we can get to them quickly before, while everybody's getting back up to their seats. So let's check out these first half stats. Big difference so far has been the fouls and penalty goals. You can see six Oof. for six for the Dudacorp. No penalty shot goal attempts yet for Clearwater. And a six goal advantage. The Duda Corp, they're playing quite well. Again, their second game with Duda up in that number one position. I think the lineup change has benefited this Duda Corp team. Yeah, Dad, what do you think here so far? Uh, what would you be saying to each one of these guys? Well, well, Duda Corp, don't read their press. Yeah. Play like you've been playing. Don't get out there and then try to get cocky and go to showing everybody what you can do. Play the team game, yeah. and you'll do good. Win the game. Win the game. The other team is not playing team polo at all. It's it's Gringo gets the ball and or and and not passing. Yeah. Now, uh, Chip Campbell's hit more balls today than he has all year, and he's coming up with the ball. They should be pumping that ball to him. Yeah. Let and him pull stretching team. that game out. Yeah. And uh, instead of tap 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 and all this kind of stuff. Well, and also, you know, I think something to be said there too. When when they start when they start tapping, all right. When guys are expecting the ball to come, and and a guy takes an extra tap, they're they're covered. They're up. out of range. They're out, they're of, out range. of range. They're covered up exactly. And so it's very difficult if you're playing with a guy that likes to tap the ball a lot, uh, to to know where to go and what to do, because it's inevitably when you break, he's going to take another tap, or then you're coming back in, he hits the ball away because he gets in trouble, or you know. So they they take a tap, and it gives the opponent time to cover him. Yep. When they when they cover up a guy tapping the ball, he's got from the the opponent's horse's nose everything to the right. Mm -hmm. He has no left, mm -hmm. and if he taps, they're going to cover him up. So the cut the, right, the, the, the the left, left side, side is is dead. Yep, and uh, which I mean, is like a knock in. I mean, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I hear exactly. what you're saying. Yeah. Well, before we jump back into it, we got a bunch of great questions coming in here. I'm going to try to get to all of them, but. First, we got one here coming in from Pete Merlos. He says, Toby, so glad to hear your dad. One of my heroes. Question for him. Playing in Argentina Open so successfully with Mario de Plata uh, with very little time to adjust. How did you do it, Tommy? Always well-mounted. Did he play any of his own horses those days in Argentina? I get a call from Gonzalo Tenora. Uh, Negro hurt. Uh, uh, Negro uh, Agote got hurt. Would he take his place? I said, sure. So I fly up from the south, been on the ranch. Not really <clears throat> riding the green horses, but uh, I get there. Negro's got four horses, and they're nice horses, but they're not as easy as my horses were. Mm -hmm. And they take a hold of you. And he had a good chestnut mare. And they said, do you have any horses you can get? There was two Dickey Santa Marina Gildens that uh, Harold Berry had played, and they had problems. One had an ankle, one had a tendon, and they'd been turned out for three years. <laughs> So I said, yeah. And he said, well, bring them in. And I played those horses in two weeks. I played them two chuckers each in Argentine Open. And they never got tired. That's amazing. That, that's the, the, the quality of horse that he produced. Oh, wow. And uh, That's incredible. Three years turned out and came yeah, back. Yeah. I mean, big old grass bellies on them, manes <laughs> down. It just, <laughs> you know, it looked like uh, that yeah. comic strip. You yeah. Know. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, we had an interesting question coming in there from Stormy Hale while we're on the topic of horses. She was asking, what do you think about... Oh, no way. Good shot. What a goal. Sorry, the, the goal kind of interrupted. The, the question was, <laughs> what do you think about limiting the number of horses each player can play? I don't think you can do that. I don't yeah. either. I don't think you can do that. And I think, I mean, you see some players play you know, a shorter again. list of horses, but I think, you know, horse management, Toby, like we've talked about a lot, is is huge. What a goal, Timmy that's, Duda. That's, that's like uh, telling Mickey Mantle he can't use a bat. Yeah. You know? Uh, I agree. I don't think that's, uh, that to me, is that's something that's been floated. It's something that, you know, these people work these, to get these get these horses. Yeah. And uh, 
That's true. They're not just given, right? No, I mean, they have to no. find them. They got to train. They got to. They, I mean, they're, they're lots of time, blood, sweat, tears, money spent to get these these sources. And your bigger organizations, like. Uh, Dolphina and Valiente, yeah, they've got an advantage because they've got 150, 170 head horses. But they aren't all good, but they fill in with those horses. Sure, sure. <clears throat> and they, they somehow they keep their horses fresh, and that's very difficult. It's to impressive do. to see, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, I saw a horse today that uh, uh, Pinello played that I don't think we'll see him again. Yeah. He turned him back, and the horse stuttered and ran backwards. Oh, I didn't see it. And wouldn't jump out. And huh. He uh, he had a persuader. Yeah. And, and he persuaded him one time, but <laughs> <coughs> he got the message. But I don't think you'll see that. That's that's what I'm talking about. A fill in. Sure. You sure. Know. Yeah. You just gotta gotta get through a chucker. T takes the place of a a top one. Top one. Oh, Gringo, back up to Campbell. Chip. I think I'm going to have to steal that term, the persuader. The persuader. That's a great one, isn't it? Yeah. Here you go, Chip. There you go, Chip. If you don't stop him, he can hurt you. Chip Campbell coming in. All right, welcome back to USP Polo Network. We had a bit of a collision there between, uh, I believe it was, it was, it was. Um, I think Criado. Yeah, ran Criado. Into his Zinni. own teammate, Jared yeah. Zenny, who can walking off. And uh, yeah, so anyway, they got Jared got knocked down. Um, he's getting mounted back up. We should be getting back underway here in just a second. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna review this play right now, and they might assess a foul, even though it's. Uh, well, let's see. It's going to be a, a safety. The ball goes over the back line there. But, uh, man, tough yeah, break there for good them. Good to see Jared okay here. Horse walking off on its own power as well. But it was a tough collision. Criado was kind of running down. Jared was locked up with another guy, turned to his left, and Criado had nowhere to go or any time to stop. Ended up sort of T-boning Zenny. That's Pixie, that, that mayor of, uh, of Zinni's that, that he got hit on there. Um, Chip started on a tambourine, going through the ones that we know here. And then uh, oh, 10 points for that mount up there by Jared Zenni. Did he do the jump? I was looking down. The Nico Pires. I love it. That's so cool. <laughs> Well, and you only save that for when you're on field one. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't hop around for five, <laughs> five or six steps. <laughs> oh, my goodness. When we had that question from Memo earlier talking about opening up the game, I got a good question from our friend Matt Schwartz, and he was wondering what you would think about implementing a two-point line, maybe about like a 100-yard arc. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, uh, they're going to shoot when they feel right. Yeah. And and the two point, uh, they they used to use it indoor, mm -hmm. and they and, do still. Yeah. And uh, it's it's all right in indoor because the the field's not that long. But I, I I just we're getting away from the traditional game, is my opinion. When I first got into polo, the blue book, the blue book was about ten pages. Yeah. <laughs> And now you pick one up, and it takes six Philadelphia lawyers to figure it out. <laughs> well, I I tend to agree with you. I think we you know we use it in 
the 40 goal challenge mm-hmm. exhibition games and it's quite fun. fun and it's, it, it's exciting but yeah. you know i've thought about it too as much as i like it in those games i don't know if i don't know how i feel with it bringing it into i think it'd be kind of cool actually honestly i really do uh, it just uh it's like the what what's the rule that you like and the ball rolls and oh the bu- buzzer beater buzzer beater uh that that's gonna stick but that might be as close to two points. I can yeah, get, you you're know? probably right, Dad. Honestly, yeah. Um, let's see. All right, we got to still. Oh well, and I remember. Let's see. Anya Ekbo says, uh, "Tommy, what was your most memorable moment uh, from your career playing in America?" Oh, winning the U.S. Open. Winning the U.S. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, we just had some information pop up here. Here, what do you think about using mouse shutters on gags and why? Well, if you if you don't have a mouse shutter on a gag, you've got a snaffle. Yeah. Basically, that's what you got. Yeah. Gag is to keep the mouse shut. Yeah. Go ahead. And keep the mouse shut, so that the mouth doesn't dry out. When the mouth gets dry, they lose the sensitivity, and with the mouth kept wide open, it's just breathing straight air in, and it gets dry. And uh, it's just one of those things that they're there for a reason. Yeah. Now, it's... you don't have to have – some horses don't like them. You don't have to have them tight. But other horses, you got to crank on them. Yeah. You, know? you got to uh, – well, like you say, keep the mouth shut, they right? got to keep the mouth shut. Nothing uh, nothing any worse than to have a horse's mouth wide open and a tongue hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Ruben Gracida had a mare like that, and we called her lingua. Which, tongue tongue yeah <laughs> all right so I what sh- we have here going on uh is that we have dangerous riding going against jared zinni on that last play he's out that's he got uh a yellow double yellow on that or was it the one or two well he got yeah, sitting he out got for double yellow. double yellow so he's out for two minutes um and then they give the penalty four to del rio who just sends it on through and is going to triple up uh clear water on the scoreboard here and they've got a minute and a half left till he can come back out on the field right now Seven total goals so far. And look at that. The most goals scored on the season so far for the Dudacorp. Still have almost three chuckers to play. All right. Here we go. Ball's back into play. Mm, we get another whistle. Real quick. Yeah, 502. So they're going to blow a foul against Nino on Chip. So Chip had the right away. It'll go in favor of Clearwater here. <laughs> Catherine says, Tommy needs to do commentary every week. I would love that. I've been pushing for that myself. <laughs> Here comes Lukitas to bring the ball into play. Lucas now breaks first left, then back to the right. He's going to catch two, three players flat-footed right here. Tommy Del Rio is the last person to get through. Now he's going to turn it back to the right and try to hold the ball here and burn up some time so he can get uh, his man back on the field. But if he can put one on the board here, look at that. Well done. Well done right there by Avendano, but nobody's there to pick it up. That kid is one hell of a little player. He is. Like I say, he's he's team player all the way and and sacrifices his body to protect his three at all costs. It's great, isn't it? It's yeah. fun to watch. All right. Del Rio, 44 seconds left to go till Jared Brzezini can go back out on the field. Del Rio's going to go ahead and break past uh, – Chip right here, then he'll shut back down. Chip's going to try to stay right there with him, put him in the pocket. He's going to hit the shot. Back down towards the center here, picked up by Criado. Lucas is going to be challenged right there by Avendano. Open back shot here for Gringo. And Timmy comes in to challenge Colombres. Gringo holds that ball, winds up, sends it forward once again. And again, it'll be picked up here. Turned back by Nino Obregón. Nino. Gets shot. Oh, hello. Yeah. Criado coming in on the near side, trying to steal this ball away. Doesn't make contact and drifts across the front end of Obregon. Three more seconds to go until Jared's back on the field. Mm. Mm. It looks worse from there, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, All right, penalty. 
five. Yeah, it looks. Yep, five right away. Sorry. From the spot. All right, so Jared's t- served his time in, in the penalty box. He's on the field now. Here comes Nino. Jumps on that right away. Takes it for Whoa. Whale. I hate to say this, but when we played the game, we had fun. <laughs> and this doesn't look fun. <laughs> <laughs> Little choppy here in the fourth, that's for sure. And a, another foul here. Criado just... I, I played in Santa Barbara with a gentleman from Midland named Toby Hilliard. Greatest man in the world. Couldn't ride a pasture with a handful of grass. <laughs> but he was a great man in the world. So we're going on the field for the first time. And he said, what do you want me to do? I said, Toby, uh, I want you to protect your three at all costs. He said, yeah, okay, okay. He said, you're the three, aren't you? And I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's yeah. great. But, I mean, it was fun. It was, yeah. I mean, you get hot every once in a while. But. Every once in a while. Come on, Dad. Let's be real about it now. Every once in a while, well, you, if you had fun, <laughs> you were just as competitive as anybody out there. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Del Rio picks up another one right here. Penalty two put on through. That's seven. Let's see. How many is that there, Cody? That's seven? That is eight now for eight? Del Rio, <clears throat> putting on a penalty shooting clinic. He's wow. scored now five penalty twos, two penalty fours, drew a penalty one earlier. Oh, no, that was Timmy. That Duda. was Timmy that My got mistake. that one, yeah. yeah. And look at this. Duda jumps out of here and goes with it right now out in front. On, I'm not sure if that's Musty. Should be. He takes this one off to the left. Can he get to it? Timmy, another amazing little goal shot. Yes, he does. Today is Timmy's day. I'm telling you what. He's hit two open back shots to score, and that one wasn't quite as impressive as the first one, but still pretty good-looking shot right there. Yeah, great running goal here by Duda. Timmy's approach shot off to the left-hand side, and he just gives it a little kiss with the open back shot. Very nice. Beautiful done. goal. So with that penalty one early in the game and two from the field here in the fourth, Timmy's got three goals now to his credit. Umpires waiting for him to line up properly. He puts the ball back into play. Going to be Gringo to win this play. Now he gives it over to Lucas Criado Jr. Jr. Takes off with the right here. Jared Zinni stays with the man. Now Jr. winds up, sends it forward, looking for Colombres, muscling his way through the defender, but it's going to be taken by Del Rio. Tomas Garcia Del Rio looking around. I love the way this guy plays the game. Winds up, hits it back to the left, creates more space for himself as Joaquin's doing, just like Tommy was saying earlier, protecting his three. His four, I should say, in this case. Sends it down, looking for Timmy on the near side, takes it forward, then takes the man. Well done, Timmy Duda. What a play right here. Duda in the red zone. Another one on the board for Timmy Duda. I'm telling you, much better at the number one position than the number four position in my mind. And, and he's waiting on that ball. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and Del Rio's sending it. You know, that's the thing. You got. Yeah, I agree completely. But there again, Timmy's got to have confidence in those guys to hit him the ball sure. to be there. And it takes two or three plays like this, and he's going to be, I over, mean, be so confident that. You know, it's going to make the team play easier. Exactly, yeah. I mean, the more that he does, yeah. the, the easier it is for, for his other three players to, to make good plays here. Look at this. And, again, what a play right here by Avendano. All right. Going to be taken back around here by Nino Overgone. Nino gets told to play it, play it, play it. Turns it back to the inside here. Now he'll leave it for Del Rio. Del Rio looking around for a place to put this ball. Such a classic player. He hits this one down the left-hand side. Once again, looking for Timmy, who comes in and picks up that ball, just like you're talking about. He's got that confidence now. Yeah. He'll shut it down right here as good back shot there from Chip Campbell. Gringo couldn't get on the right away fast enough. Knows he couldn't get there, so he didn't even try. He's going to wait right here. Now we're down to under 30 seconds. What, what a, a play. play. Look at that. <clears throat> I love this play from Nino. Back over to Avendano. Keeps it away from Colombre. So look at this. Couldn't keep it alive. Now knocked down. They're going to blow this one against Zinni right away. That's going to end the chucker, though. We'll find out for sure 
what the play is going to be after we get back from this quick break right here on the USPA Polo Network. Welcome back to the USPA Polo Network. Get ready to start chucker number five. Let's check out this player feature that we've got here on Tomas Garcia Del Rio thus far as we get a look at him riding back in. Single-handedly has Clearwater doubled up on the scoreboard. Eight total goals for Del Rio. Two from the field, the rest from the penalty line, but controlling the game, playing extremely well for this Dudacorp team. What do you have to say about Tommy? Tommy? He's a... Uh... He's a remarkable player, and uh, and like I say, he's he's the backbone of this team, and he's the one's holding it together. And and when they have a bad chucker, uh, well, they haven't had one today. They, they they haven't had one the other day. They broke down in the fifth and sixth chucker with their their thought process and changed it. They shouldn't have changed it. They'd have beat that team. And uh, no, this this could be a. A really good team could be a sleeper. They they might have found their groove here today. Yeah. 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 Um, Memo asked a question here. He says, what is Tommy's opinion on today's rules allowing players to turn on the ball? Well, I I don't I don't like them turning on the ball. Uh, it, I, I, it to me, it, if it's a foul, it's a foul. You, there's degrees of turning on it. Sure. You you turn on it sharp. What gets me is these people that go up, turn their horses, and then hit the ball. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a foul. Yeah. Uh, the guy that taps it around, that's one thing. But actually go to the ball, turn the horse, and then. Yeah, and, exactly. And that's, yeah, yeah I, I know what you mean. Um, but it's quicker. But Well, your, your, your daughter here, Tori, my sister, so I have a question for Dad. Uh, what does he think about everybody not using mouth shutters on gags and why? Oh, we already went through that one. Then, um, and then Russell Stimmel has a longer question that we can get to a little bit later on here. Uh, Del Rio, another penalty two put on through here. R. K. So they've got him quadrupled up on the scoreboard right now. Uh, let's see. Gringo takes this one, and he's going to go ahead and send it up here, to, where he's going to find, where he's going to find uh, uh, Jared Zenny going to the goal. Here, Jared drops it back. Here comes Criado with a near side neck shot at the goal. Lucas is shot. Going to be knocked down and taken out of there by Nino. Overgone. Nino breaking with it right here. That's be back on Pilsner here from the first chucker. That's that horse that Dad said came from close to our place down in Argentina. There from. Uh, from Jeff Hall originally. Now, up in front, right now, Gringo knows he cannot afford to let Timmy go. Oh, tough break here for Timmy. Got, that one got away from him, goes over the back line wide. So we'll get a knock in here. This is only the third knock in the day for Clearwater. Well, 16 goals on the board <laughs> means you're not going to miss yeah. too many. 
having a heck of a day, huh? Really has been perfect day so far for the Duda Corp. Everything going in their favor in this one. I like this. We got a great uh, suggestion here. Let's see. Coming back now, it's going to be uh, Lucas taking this one down. He's got Timmy hanging with him right here. Criado, uh-oh, got away from him. Who's going to get back to it first? It's going to be Lucas. <clears throat> Clutch slipping there a little bit. Yeah, that's what I said. I was thinking the same thing. He's going to wind up, fire the ball back down the field here. Looking for anybody but Del Rio, who's always back there <laughs> playing. I mean, he's just there, isn't he? I mean, yeah. amazing. Tomas, season high score in scoring by four goals. So this is four goals better than their best performance so far. And we're only in chucker number five. We still got five minutes left to go. Here comes Nino. Holds out the man. Criado right there with him. Luquitas digs it off the boards. Couldn't quite get it done. And then Gringo comes in to collect the play. Colombres back the inside. Hits a pass back over here looking for Lucas. Oh, yeah. They're going to catch him on that one. Yeah. Uh, When winning is okay. This is okay. So, so Cindy Halley has a question for you. She says, Tommy, what do you do as a player uh, or as a team in this stage of a game when winning is out of reach? Do you save your horses for the next game or do you try and make as many positive plays as possible? Just wondering what your mindset would be in uh, these kinds of situations. Great, great, great question there, Cindy. Well, best of, best of all, don't get in a situation like this. <laughs> sure. You know? Yeah. But if you're, you agreed to play when you walked on the field, so you've got to finish the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe you don't have to run your top horses as hard, but you've got to make a show of it. And uh, and you, nobody loves to get beat like this. So, well, I mean, yeah, no. At this point, I, I think I understand what the question is. Like, you know, are you, you you don't want to just pull up. No, you want to no, you want to no. make some positive plays. So at this point, you know you're not going to win the game. So at this point, you're going to have to. You got to take your wins where you get them. Win this play. Win this chucker. Yeah, right. Yeah, and 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 don't be afraid to adjust. Yes, take chances now. Take try chances new things. And yeah. and maybe your away shots have not been working. Go to a tail shot. Sure, uh, makes sense, Dad. Yeah, turning the ball all the time doesn't work. Hit no, a back shot, no, right? No. All right, here we go. We had a, just had a missed open goal penalty there by Negro or by Lucas Criado Jr. Here comes Timmy looking for another one here from right to left. The funnel effect comes into play as he works it back at the goal. And it's going to be what a play by Duda making the hook. And then Avendano comes in and sops up the gravy right there. It's the second goal of the game here. Very nice play there by Duda hooking the back shot. Criado has to take this one forward one time. And you can see right here, Timmy gets in, hooks the back shot, allows Avendano to come in. Get a well-deserved goal for all the work he's been doing. Okay. Back to the center. <laughs> Lori Chat says, need some number two horses out there. Uh, that'd be great. There, there, it's been a while since there's been one of those on the field. Here comes a gringo. Able to pick up the ball right here. He's going to shoot at the goal from distance. He, this one's going, going, going. He got it. What a shot, Gringo. Love to see more of those kind of shots, yeah. no? Yeah. <clears throat> well, maybe they'd have a chance if the two-point rule wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Good but call, I, Cody. You know, like going back to Cindy Halley's question, Toby, you and I talk about it all, all the time, especially in a tournament like the U.S. Open. You want to be able to go into your next game with some oh, positive shoot. momentum. That's it. Yeah, that's what we're yeah. saying. I mean, you got to, because this can be demoralizing, you know, when you're in this situation like this. So, you know, the best thing you can do is, like I said, m small victories. You know, if you're not winning the game, win a chucker. If you can't win the chucker, win a play and then start back from there. Right. And like Dad said, take chances, do different things, try different things, try to, you know, moving guys around different positions, whatever. Here comes a shot back down the field. And then. Let's see. Criado with an open back shot right here down the boards. Gringo going to jump on it. He got to it. Colombres. We'll get confirmation as well, but I believe 17 goals, the highest scoring game, a single output for one team. Pilot, remember, had 16 in their last game. <laughs> That's a good, okay. Here comes Campbell. 
Right back at it. Looking good, Chip. You got it all the way, Chip Campbell. Oh, get there, Chip. Get there. What a goal, Chip Campbell. He drains it. Beautiful play there. And Chip will pick up his first of the day. Great goal there for Chip Campbell. So we've got a, a, another question coming in here, Dad. Well, let's watch Chip score this goal real quick because this is a nice goal. With that near side neck shot right there. He got it done. All right, so this one's coming in from Troy Lekariki. He says, your dad has an ex extensive history in all horse-related sports. Ask him how growing up as a cowboy and doing cowboy stuff helped him shape his polo career. It, uh, riding different horses. You know, even though uh, I roped, uh, you, we didn't have made horses, so we had to make them ourselves. Sure. My dad was a hell of a horseman and a hell of a roper. And, and so cutting, we cut, cutting horse champions, too. cutting horses. Uh, my grandfather was a racehorse trainer, so I, you know, I've been around it and done it. Actually, I, <laughs> when I was about fourteen, I, I, I jockeyed in about five or six brush track. Races. I didn't know that. Yeah, you must, and you must have grown. <laughs> I did. I was, <laughs> when pretty I said, soon after fourteen, you must have gotten when I was, too heavy. When I was in seventh grade, I weighed seventy-five pounds. There you go. Wow. Yeah. That's how it's in the track meet. You know? Yeah. Another, as we were talking about that, another nice goal there from distance, Fort Clearwater. They're starting to, yeah, make some positive plays happen here. And then uh, it's going to be Del Rio again. He's going to pick up the play right here. Chip checks down with him, tries to hang with him right here. Chip's wanting to make Del Rio hit away right here. And Del Rio will do just that. Sends it straight to the center here where Nino comes in, gets blows the doors off a of gringo, but can't keep the ball alive. Columbia, Columbus will turn it back around the professor here. Let's see. Hits this one back over there looking for Campbell. And that's going to end chucker number five. So we'll be back after this quick break here for the final chucker of regulation time on the USPA Polo Network. We got into Wellington, Florida market because of the number of horses were there. So we decided that we should also sell the hay there. And uh, we met some of the polo people there. And um, we've become very friendly with the polo community because the, uh, they require such a, a great quality hay, and which is what we want to provide. This club is one of the most welcoming friendly, but yet competitive polo clubs. We're all here for the love of the sport and the love of the lifestyle. This is the most fun you can have on a horse. We have several different levels. We play minus two to 20 goals. So if you don't have your own horse, we have club horses that you can use. The fields here are incredible. We've got three great grass facilities. And in the fall and the spring, we can play arena. We do a bunch of events during the summer. And our idea behind that is to promote polo, is to, again, bring polo to the masses. And this past year, we hosted the Rocky Mountain Polo Festival. Every single person that I've seen at practice in tournament is just having a great time. It's a great group of people. Everybody and anybody is welcome at the Denver Polo Club. Welcome back to the USPA Polo Network. Getting ready to play the final chuck of regulation time here. Before we get back to polo, let's check out the goal of the game so far. We'll go back to the third chucker here. There's been some good goals in this game, but this one was awesome. Joaquin Avendano takes it across the goal mouth and then hits an open back shot through some traffic here. Look at the spin on that ball. I'd say that one or Timmy Duda's first near side open back shot had a, had a, a contender for being a goal of the game or his other one. Little open back shot on the other end. All right. Beautifully done there. Okay. So. Taking a positive note here. Clearwater one chucker number five there. Yeah. 
first time they've won a chucker in this game so far. Three to one. Okay. Coming back here, uh, we got some more great stuff coming in. See, Jonathan says, uh, can we have the USPA sponsor some live coffee talks where we can ask Tommy Wayman horsemanship questions and or his views on modern polo and its development for the better or worse from when he ruled the fields to now or just hear his stories in general, infinite source of great polo knowledge. That's a great comment. Thanks, Jonathan. I'd love to, We'd love to have that happen. Something I've been pushing for for a long time. Uh, I don't know if I'd call it if I said Coffee Talks, but that's a good name. <laughs> love to have something like that happen. Um, let's see. We had some other ones. So many of them come through already. I'm, I'm going to miss a bunch, but... Oh, well, he, oh, well, Lori says, Toby, please explain the phrase in the pocket to this newbie. Thanks. All right. So when I say in the pocket, that's uh, basically meaning when a guy, I'll show you right here, right? He's going to, uh, a guy has control of the ball and he's on and he's pushing it forward, say, lays a tap and a defender comes in to challenge him. When the defender comes in there, he's putting the, he's putting the, the, the offensive player in the pocket. So that player is either going to have to release the ball. He's got that pocket of, of area around him where he can have control of that ball for the moment. So that's what I'm talking about, the, the, the pocket there. And then when, when it happens here, the next time it happens, I'll, I'll illustrate it. So right here, Ringo tried to put him in the pocket, couldn't quite get it done because he's able to get the shot off and send it down the field, over the back line wide. And, uh, okay. Let's see. Would, Hill. Yeah, go ahead. I would like to say <clears throat> in, in my whole polo career, <clears throat> I had uh, great help. Uh, I had a lot of people work for me uh, that thought like I did, that rode horses like I did. Uh, and uh, Manny Torres is, is, was my groom for so many years. And uh, he... I could I could send him home to get an open string ready, and when I got there, they were ready. That's awesome. And uh, just it's just great people that that you had working for me. Yeah, exactly. Well, Lori Tarbell says hello to my two favorite fellas. That's uh, <laughs> my cousin Lori there. And then uh, this is a good one here for you, Dad. Question for Tommy: Who were your top six horses in your lifetime? That's a good question. Sweet William. Ludi, Orphan, Gamma, La Fortuna, Tati. Is that six? I don't know. I, I, was, I, was uh, I could to go names. on. I could yeah. say <laughs> Caviar and Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy was a funny one. The other Jimmy was a, a weird. He was weird. Yeah. You go. You cinch you. You had to be walking him to get on. You couldn't have a tight cinch. Yeah. You could cinch him up going to the throw in, but you didn't want to go to a throw in on him because <laughs> if you got in the throw in. And they threw the ball in. He just start walking. <laughs> and if he hit a horse inside, he just kept walking. <laughs> the ball could be two feet there, and you could not stop him to get the ball. Now, when he got on the outside, he was fine. But that throw in was just. I love it. So you, you were just a passenger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a great story! I love that. It's That's always a, the geldings. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, Good yeah. call there, Cody. Exactly right. Oh. Um. All right, so <laughs> just, you told me that story a hundred times, and I love it every oh. time I hear it. Oh, my goodness. All right. <laughs> Here comes the uh, Nino sends the ball back down, drops it in front, and open back shot. Coming in, Nino is going to run him back. They're going to try to get to 20 goals here, I think. It's very rare that we get to see a game go to 20 goals in, in, the, in the States like they do in Argentina. Well, and we did have that stat confirmed. This is the single highest scoring output of any team so far in a gauntlet game. Yeah. Good play here by Criado. Go. <laughs> oh, almost. Oof, dangerous play to turn it in the goal mouth right here. But Gringo takes off with it, gets away from Avendano. At this point, the Dudacorp, they can poach, they can do whatever they want here, yeah. just try to. And, and on I the same think, token, though, they don't want to they don't want to slow down too much. No, they want to take no. this positive momentum. Absolutely, that's the problem. Every, every chucker they have had positive momentum. Yeah, and and it got better and better and better every chucker. And they want to keep building on that. And they sure. want to keep building on that. Uh, I I wouldn't wash the jerseys. I'd wear. <laughs> <Yeah. leave. laughs> I agree with you. I'm superstitious like yeah. that too. Um, 
Let's see. Watching many great games. Okay. I know my cousin Rob Stenzel will appreciate that. He used to not he'd tell us not to wash our whites after we win. And yes. Absolutely. Well, you know, how to, you know how to tell who's got the best groom. The, the white pants. The, the white who's got the yeah, whitest exactly. pants? Well, <laughs> I was lucky back then. My Aunt Kelly used to wash our whites, and they look brand new every time. Yeah. I, Love I, it. I still have oh. never been able to do that. <laughs> look at this. Cologne race. Doesn't get a good piece of that ball, and it's going to be picked off by Tomas Del Rio. He kind of waits to the last second, too. Well, he wants a, that guy to come to him. Yep. He and doesn't want to yeah, cut, he, cut he, down. He wants the guy, the guy to come to him. And that way, yeah, he can turn back to the inside of him. Yeah. Now, uh, let's see what we got here. They're going to leave the ball. He's going to leave. He's got good play here by Zinni. He holds that man and lets Criado come back to it. Now, he's going to force that defender out of his way. Then he'll fire up here, and Timmy's going to get to it, and he's going to take it with him. Good play there by Timmy. Ooh. I thought he was. He's got a lot of confidence on this horse, Timmy. I like the way he plays. Mm. <sighs> he did the same play the other day in the sixth chucker on the boards on the east side, and he had a back shot. Somebody called for a back shot, and he didn't hit the back shot. He turned on it, and bingo, they took it away from him, like, yeah, Grant took Richmond. Yeah, that yeah, you know, not severe, but just like you were saying before, he starts to turn the horse before making a play on the ball there. So he broadcasts what he's going to do. You know, they, they you sit there and you watch him and say, "Well, he's going to turn him." Yeah, exactly. And then you adjust, go to it. And the, and the player behind knew exactly what he was going to do. They pick up the yeah. whistle, easy. Mm -hmm. uh, I like this comment from Troy. He says, uh, "I think the USPA should get Memo and Tommy together for a dual interview and let them relive old times." And old stories so we could all enjoy it. And I tell you what, I've been wanting to do. Actually, we talked about that earlier on the season. If Memo was here, I was going to sit down with uh, with Dad and Memo and just talk to him and just have some stories. Because you guys met in Vegas a few a number of years yeah, ago, right? Yeah, that was a really yeah. cool. Tell us a little bit about that, Dad, real quick. Uh, you know, we fought for one another for years. And uh, uh, Memo's a little younger than I am and hell of a lot better polo player. And so... We hadn't seen each other. We hadn't talked to each other. And uh, he called me and said, are you going to the national finals? I said, yeah. He said, I want to meet you out there. And we sat down and talked. We had a great, great conversation. And uh, no blows, no <laughs> tables hitting the floor. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, I really enjoyed it. And then when ski, when uh, uh, Steve Ghost passed away, he called me and, he, and they had a funeral for him in Billings. And uh, he said, let's go to lunch. And uh, so we went to lunch. And it was That's really, so great, yeah. really great. And he remembers stuff that I don't, and I don't, and, yeah. and I remember stuff that he doesn't. And it's, That's it's, right. Yeah, it's I think everybody fun. wants to hear you guys together because it'd be yeah. so much fun. But, yeah, I mean, you know, I remember growing up at, at Palm Beach Polo, you had, y'all, we had our box right here, and they were just to, to the other side of mm -hmm. us. And so you guys were always going uh, rivals and everything. And then look at this shot from Timmy. Oh, nice try. But, uh, I mean, yeah. And then I used to, you know, Mishi was, was one of my best friends growing up. So I spent a lot of time over there at their house. And, um, but I've always, I've always admired the two of you guys, uh, the way you all played and as well, competitors. And There was mutual respect. Yeah. Uh, we might not talk, but we had mutual yeah. respect. Uh, and that's no, what but... he said earlier here, too. Actually, Megan sent me a, a text earlier saying something along those lines. Uh, yeah, she said... Uh, Memo and I love hearing you and your dad commentating. You guys are the best. Please send your dad a big hug from me, she says in particular. So, And then Mishi, I think, said, no, yeah, that was Megan that said that. But here comes Criado looking for one more positive play before the end of this game. Hell of a shot. Mm. Got away from a little bit there. Yeah, when we had Memo on as our special guest, he had a, mm. lot, of, a lot of good things to say mm. about you, Tommy. Uh, Here's we, another. Go ahead. No, uh, I'll tell you a funny story. We're playing the America's Cup in Greenwich. Owen, myself, Carlos, and Memo. And I have got this, had this really, really good horse called La Fortuna. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I scored three goals on him in the last joker. They said one was a foul, come back. But anyway, um, somebody fouled, and they gave him a penalty from the center of the field. And I'm, you know, cussing and 
I look back and nobody, Carlos, Memo, Owen are all off changing horses. <laughs> and and uh, um, no, uh, the guy's playing back, I think his name went, he's teeing it up to quick hit it. So I just walk over to the ball and my horse kicks the ball. And he comes and he was Ernesto Trotz. And it's Trotz. And he had veins sticking out and he was, and he'd come around this side and I'd block him off and then he'd turn around <laughs> and I'd block him off. <laughs> and I said, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and, and oh, he got mad. <laughs> Finally, uh, they got back and gave me some relief. Oh uh, man, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, yeah, I, I did. I did the finals of the Argentine Open in 2018 with Ernesto Trotz, and we mm -hmm. talked about you guys playing against each other. And he had nothing but nice things to say. I don't think he mentioned that one on purpose, but he remembers it. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. It. it was... <laughs> um, Stephanie says, uh, "Mr. Wayman, who was your mentor? Had the biggest influence in your polo career?" Uh, my father. I was about to say, yeah, Billy. And Harold Berry. And what a goal right there to end the game. Uh, Ray Herring. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll make a quick story of this. When I was a kid, I always copied swings. Okay. My near side swing was Ray Harrington. My offside swing was Harold Berry. And my back shot was Ray Harrington. And next shot, that just comes to you. Sure. You, it's timing. But I, I copied all that. So I'd have to say that those guys were the ones that set my foundation. And, uh, and uh, 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 credit to all of them. They, they all took good care of me. They, they weren't great, great teachers. They would tell you one time and you had to listen. And if you didn't get exactly it, you didn't right. get a second chance. <laughs> and, uh, well, Dad, I tell you what, I've had such a great time with you today. Thanks so much for coming in and being a part of this uh, live well, stream with us. Uh, Appreciate it, enjoyed it, and I, like I said before, you guys are doing a hell of a job. Thanks, Dad. It's not easy after seeing all this equipment in here. <laughs> I can't turn change channel on one of these things. But, you know, you guys are good. You explain things. It, it's just a pleasure to listen to you. Well, That's, thank you, Tommy. And you bet. Honor to share the booth with you today. No. Great game for the Duda Corp. What can you say? That's by far their best game of the season so far. Clearwater. Back to the drawing board after a tough loss here. But the Duda Corp and everybody at their tent are going to have a good Sunday afternoon. Oh, yeah. That was a great compliment, Dad. Thanks so much. That really meant a lot to me. All right. For Tommy Wayman and uh, for Cody Offen, I'm Toby Wayman. Stay tuned. We're going to have a we're gonna have a, an interview uh, after the game is over here with somebody from the winning team. Abigail's going to walk down there. So we'll be back in just a few here on the USPA Polo Network.